I remember having this horrible itch for days afterwards, you know, because I lost my virginity. And I think that's when I fell pregnant, my first time. Boys, they're more, they need to get their virginity out of the way. And it's something that, you know, they would talk about and that kind of stuff. Whereas for girls, if you, if you rush it or anything like that, you can be considered a slut very easily. I think everyone's put under that pressure. They have to lose before a certain age. You don't want to be the last one out of all your mates because then, well, it, you just get slagged. You wouldn't get slagged, but it would just be a bit of banter like about it. I was 15 was my first memory of sort of heavy petting with a girl and kissing and dropping the hand, as they say, you know. And then some, you know, you meet the friends out and say, did you get the smelly finger, you know? You didn't talk about sex. You talked more about going out with boyfriends and, you know, you, you like them and go dancing, but sex was really to, to boo. People tend to lose their virginity around 16 or 17. Uh, it's generally when you're in that sort of group, uh, where you're going out with a group of girls or something like that, going to a lot of parties. I guess there's a lot of pressure for girls, from guys to be kind of open about it and to be up for doing it. And then from girls not to do it loads of times and to be very careful about how they who they do it with and that kind of thing. So you kind of have pressure coming on about sides, telling you to do different things. I met this girl and we're up a laneway and kissing away and fondling and she saw that she wasn't stopping. Usually they saw that the hand would go down and stop. There was no stop and it went on and on and on. And then I got this, you know, if you get me into trouble, will you marry me? And I went, yeah, no problem. But I didn't know what she meant. We went to the pictures. <laughs> it was after the pictures. It was nothing planned. I wasn't thinking about anything like that. We, we kissed and that's the way, it, you know, and then it just, it just, just happened. You go and you'd score uh, maybe 20, 20, 20 girls in a club or, or in, in Wesley. And it never really went past that or anything like that because there were the bouncers around and Wesley did get a bad name, but I don't think it was as bad as it was said it was in the paper. If you heard a girl had done it loads of times, then it was a bit kind of like, oh, well, she's been around. Whereas if a guy had done it loads of times, he gets kind of cheered on for it. So did you have sex before marriage? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Yeah, well, I had more sex before marriage than I did in the first couple of years of marriage. No, there was no pill, there was no condoms, that wasn't allowed. And that's all to do with the church. All you could do then is just the withdrawal symptom and you just hope you, you caught it in time or, you know, you, then you're waiting for the end of that month. Does she get a period or does she not? And she might come and say, I'm late and you're going, oh, sweet Jesus. You didn't enjoy sex because you were always worried, oh, I wonder, am I going to be having a baby? And that was the fear all the time, because naturally you didn't want one baby after another. Condom trips were, uh, you had friends that were, uh, followed Liverpool and uh, Manchester United, and they'd head off every week, every second weekend to Liverpool. And you gave your order in, because when they arrived there, they spent most of the day hitting every box in the pubs, in the toilets, in the train stations and they get as many as they can and bring them back and sell them for a ridiculous amount of money. But that was the only way you could get condoms. You can get them anywhere. You can get them in Tesco and multi-packs or pharmacies, so they're very easily available. So I think that would mean people would do it more, more with the different people because there isn't so much of a concern of, oh, this could completely damage me because you have some sort of protection. What would you think about a world where it was forbidden to use contraception? That never exists. <laughs> no, that's what I so. I think it's much harder to say no in this generation than it was previously because obviously back in the day it was considered normal only to ever have sex with the person that you married. Um, and that was totally accepted. Whereas now there are people who would go out and have sex on a night out and that's also completely accepted. I only had a sexual partner, one sexual partner. Can, how many can say that, that he had one sexual partner? So, so how, how was I so bad, you know, as to have a child and yet only had one partner, where now I think it's gone too much the other way. I think they know too much too soon. I guess 
Facebook influences it more as in everyone knows who you're dating because you have a status that says whether you're in a relationship with someone or whether you're single and it can be hidden and you don't actually have to show it but a lot of people would have their relationship status up and so it's always a big gossip when you see someone's relationship status has changed and there's always a load of comments on it and it's kind of like they call it Facebook official. Sex can't be just, oh God, he's after it tonight. I've got a headache, I, I don't fancy it. It has to be, I think the chemistry has to be there. I had sex three or four times in the first year of marriage. And that might be exaggerating. I mean, we always had a great sexual life from then to, to, to always, funny enough, we always had. I tell you what changed the sex in my marriage later on, I'd say by the mid eighties was um, video. You had the people calling around with the, in the cars and the vans. Every, you know, you bought your video recorder and then you just say, have you any porn? He goes, oh yeah. And then all of a sudden the porn's going on and then, you know, you're sitting there watching the porn, have a few drinks and hey presto. You know what happens after that. People would be a lot more open in their sexual behaviour when they're drinking and they tend to go for people that they wouldn't go for when they were sober, so. I was 39 when I uh, separated from my ex-wife and I can remember my first date. Oh God, I was so nervous. I was sitting there having a drink and I could feel my hands and all shit. I didn't know what to say to them. You know, it was like going back 20 odd years or whatever. And, and, then, we talk, and then she was more yappity yappity, you know, she was a lot younger. And I mean, she was the one who said, well, okay, we're going back to your place. And I said, no, you're going home. And she says, but I want to go back to your place. And I says, no, not tonight. And I kind of, she's so easy nowadays, you know. And then a few other sort of one night stands, it was never a problem, you know. I, I wouldn't know one girl who wouldn't have sex before marriage. Especially because they would, they generally, girls would generally, before they get married, they're going to get into relationships. And part of a relationship is sex, so. Parents can be accepting of their children sleeping with people, but I'm sure a lot of parents just don't want to know that their children are doing it and would prefer to just be blind to it, even if they have an idea. Um, I don't think, I know for me, I would never do it in my house. I have respect more for my parents than anything. I think that in then times in Ireland, it was more shame because, the, because of Ireland, the church ruled Ireland and ruled families. That's my personal opinion. And that's why you felt so shame when any young girl had a baby outside of marriage. During the seventies, too many people got married for the wrong reasons. And I'd say if you look at divorces now, I say majority are coming from the 60s and the 70s marriage. While people now in the 80s that live together for a while. But then I've seen people that live together for five, six, seven, eight years get married and then they divorce the following bloody year. I'd live with someone my whole life and be, not be married, but be in a relationship with someone. I wouldn't have to have the whole marriage thing. My parents' generation would got married a lot earlier than we would now, it's considered normal to get married just before you go 30 or in your early 30s, late 30s. Whereas before it was considered normal to get married in your early 20s to late 20s. So I think that kind of changes things because obviously they had their lifelong partner from their 20s. And so they were obviously having sex from their 20s, which is the same as it is now. Like my mom, she, she told me that she didn't have sex before marriage and stuff like that, so I presume I don't know if she's lying to me, but she is.